Good afternoon, everyone, wherever you may be. I hope that you are sitting comfortably with some suitable refreshments to keep you going through this afternoon's sessions. I am sitting in my study at my home in Edinburgh, and I must confess to being very relieved that my three small children are at school, so I can present to you today knowing that there's no risk of them Zoom bobbing me. Now, I'm conscious that you will have heard a lot about impact investing over the past few days from groups with different perspectives, from asset owners and asset allocators and consultants, and from people with experience in different asset classes. While not being somebody who enjoys talking about themselves, I thought that it might be helpful to you if I was to provide a little bit of context around today's presentation by telling you about my role in this exciting and important world of impact investing that we've all got a common interest in today. Bailey Gifford is an investment management firm that was established over a century ago. We are a partnership owned by our 46 partners who work in the business today. I am a partner responsible for our positive change strategy, a strategy with two objectives of equal importance to deliver attractive investment returns to our clients over meaningful periods of time and to help our clients contribute towards a more sustainable world for current and future generations. The strategy is global in perspective and concentrated in nature. We invest in 33 listed companies whose products and services are providing solutions to the four impact themes that we've identified. We've been working on our strategy for nearly five years. So this afternoon, I hope to achieve two things. Firstly, to elaborate on why I'm optimistic about the future. And secondly, to provide some reflections on our experiences so far. Now, it could be argued that the backdrop today is extremely bleak. We are in the midst of a global pandemic, which will have far reaching and deep consequences. And if we aren't reading about coronavirus updates, the alternative headlines are equally troubling, such as riots breaking out surrounding Black Lives Matter, geopolitical risks and tensions rising, and increasing evidence of the challenge around climate change. These headlines highlight the grave and unfortunately intensifying challenges that our world is facing. They are troubling and deeply depressing. But I am a glass half full person. I'm an optimist. And I think that optimistic outlook and a focus on what might go right and a constant bid to continue to improve is something that runs throughout our culture at Bailey Gifford. So what we're trying to do with the positive change strategy is put our energy and efforts into looking into how we can build a better future rather than dwelling on the challenges that we're facing and the shortcomings of capitalism as we've known it over the last few decades. And I believe that there is reason for optimism in terms of what can be done and the role that we, the investment community, can play in helping steer us onto a more sustainable path. Before focusing on the longer term trends and how we think about powering positive change over meaningful periods of time, I would just like to take a short detour, if I may, to the short term, to the current crisis. I think that the global pandemic is shining an even brighter light on, and unfortunately, in some cases, intensifying the challenges that we face as a society. Growing inequalities in numerous measures and the impact that our large and growing population is having on our home, planet Earth. I found the pictures and videos that were taken during the peak of the lockdown period really striking and illustrating just how quickly and obviously our environment felt the benefits from the sharp reduction in human economic activity. From clearer waters in Venice to people in India being able to see the Himalayas for the first time in 30 years due to less air pollution. So the optimist in me is hoping that the pandemic might catalyze action and increase the willingness of countries, governments, businesses and individuals to collaborate to drive positive change. 
It perhaps serves as another stark reminder that the economic model needs to evolve and needs to put people and planet at the heart of global value creation. More specifically for our strategy, it's been heartening to learn how our companies have been reacting to the crisis. The crisis has provided an opportunity for us to gain more insight into the corporate culture and the intent of the management teams and the companies in which we invest. And it's been encouraging as well to see that the companies we're investing in are actually actively helping contribute positively to addressing the crisis from the products and services that they're providing. From healthcare companies that are helping us better understand the disease, here, I'm referencing the gene sequencing company, Illumina, to health companies that are helping develop a vaccine like Moderna. And then those companies whose products are powering all the devices that are helping us work from home and helping us gain access to information. There are some very specific cases where the pandemic is actually accelerating changes that we've been thinking about. For example, it has increased the acceptance and awareness of telemedicine to the benefit of companies like Teladoc. The CEO of Teladoc was telling us last week that he believes the crisis has accelerated the shift towards patients using and engaging with telemedicine by up to four years. So the point that I'm making is that I hope that good things will emerge from the crisis. Getting back on track though, to the long term, over long periods of time, decades and centuries, we have observed the fantastic progress that has been made. We're living longer, the population of people living in extreme poverty has reduced, and global literacy rates have increased significantly. We believe in the power of human ingenuity and entrepreneurial flair, so we're excited about the opportunities that lie ahead for our society to advance and the role that investors have in powering that positive change over the long term. So I think there are several reasons for optimism, but this afternoon I'm going to limit myself to three areas that we are excited about. First of all, we are in the midst of the emergence of exciting new technologies that are going to help increase our understanding of human biology through tools and data that are going to help us better understand diagnose, treat, and ultimately prevent diseases. Illumina, the gene sequencing business that I've already mentioned, has achieved an incredible feat in reducing the cost of genome sequencing to less than $1,000. It's the dominant player in this growth market, so we believe it's got a fantastic growth runway as its products extend beyond the research domain and into the clinical market. The growth opportunity and a strong competitive advantage mean that we think that the company could deliver attractive investment returns for our clients for a number of years. Tools like Illumina's mean that there's an incredible tailwind for innovative businesses like Moderna to develop entirely new ways of treating and preventing diseases. So a company like Illumina is really key to enabling scientific and medical progress. Secondly, we believe that digital innovation is powering all sorts of industries and benefiting many people in society. Digital innovation is powering healthcare devices, e-commerce, financial tools. Here I could mention Safaricom, so Kenya's mobile phone operator that is also providing um, access to financial tools through its M-Pesa mobile payment system. I think that this is a company that is well known and loved in the impact circuits and probably one that you've heard of a number of times over the last couple of days. So instead, I'd like to highlight on a company that describes itself as the most important tech company you have never heard of. I'm referring to ASML. This company makes equipment that performs a crucial step in manufacturing semiconductors. Its equipment has been powering Moore's Law so enabling more powerful and more affordable computing, supporting technological advances in numerous industries and helping democratize access to those technologies by helping them become cheaper. Just last week, we were exploring the upside opportunity for the business as we reflected on the conversations that we've had with the management team. 
We are exploring how it can meet our two times growth hurdle over the next five years and what the growth opportunities might be thereafter. The third area that I would like to highlight is the future of food. Now, this is a topic that's rife with complexities and one that we've been researching over the last few years. So there are more of us and there's a growing demand for what might be classified as developed world diets. And yet the environmental impact of food is vast. So agriculture accounts for an estimated 20% 20, 20 of global greenhouse gas emissions and is responsible for 70% of water consumption. It's also the leading cause of land loss and reduction in biodiversity. So how do we address this? Well, we could do more with less. We're looking for ways in which we can increase agriculture output whilst reducing our reliance on nasty inputs. And a company that's helping address this challenge is John Deere. So John Deere manufactures a range of agriculture equipment, including its iconic green tractors, its planters and its combine harvesters. John Deere dedicated more than a billion dollars in research and development annually and is the global leader in precision agriculture. Now, it's precision agriculture that really excites us because this is leveraging digital technologies such as sensors, cameras, satellite communication and software to help simultaneously improve agricultural input whilst reducing inputs such as fertilizer and pesticides. A good illustration is its exciting sea and spray technology that it's developing. With this technology, a camera at the front of the tractor can help identify an individual weed using computer vision and machine learning. So the computer algorithm identifies which plant is crop and which is plant and will then only apply pesticides to the weeds. With this technology, John Deere is able to reduce pesticide use by up to 80%. We can also completely transform the way we do things. And Beyond Meat is an exciting example here. The founder of this business, Ethan Brown, has an ambition to not just produce plant-based meat substitutes that appeal to vegetarians, but to develop plant-based meat substitutes that meat eaters desire. In this respect, I think it's very striking that over 90% of their customers that purchase their products in supermarkets also buy meat-based products. The degree of change and improvement to the status quo is what is really required to drive positive change. We've really got to look to transformational solutions. Now, if I reflect on our experiences five years into our journey in impact investing, what I would say is that what we're trying to achieve is hugely motivating and I believe very important, but it's not easy. There's no such thing as a perfect company. The global challenges that we're looking to address are interlinked, so you might be addressing one challenge but fueling another. Having two objectives to manage requires careful consideration. And then how do you report on something as subjective as impact? This latter point is a presentation in itself and a topic that it's been explored in other sessions over the course of the summit. But how do we overcome those first three challenges? Well, first of all, I think that you have to be upfront, upfront and accepting these challenges only then can you address them. To overcome them, I believe that it requires an awareness and rigorous analysis of the positive and the negative aspects of a company so that the judgments that you make in deciding if a company is on balance net positive are fully informed. I believe it requires a broad mindset in understanding the complexities and how different systems are interlinked. And thirdly, I believe it requires analysis and management of, a, of our two objectives to ensure that one isn't relinquished for the other. So we've got a growth hurdle that's really protected us from investing us in companies that might have the potential to deliver impact but might not make great investments. So with positive change, we're looking for companies that we believe have the potential to double 
over five years with significant growth opportunities thereafter. A final reflection or observation that I'd share is that I think that we've faced a lot of scepticism um, that investing in the public markets means that you have limited impact as shareholders because our opportunity to provide primary capital is somewhat limited. But I truly believe that we can deliver um, impact in listed equities through our engagement and stewardship. I think that being long-term and patient shareholders is one of the main benefits that we bring to the companies that we invest in. So often we'll be asked, what did you engage on? What did you change? And of course, often we sometimes we will want to engage to prompt change, but more often what we're looking to do with our engagement with the companies is to understand and support them. So some of the most powerful and impactful engagements that I've enjoyed as an investor is where we've been encouraging a company to pursue their long-term strategic goals, where we've been encouraging them to resist short-term pressures of the market, to continue investing in the future of their business and to feel comfortable sacrificing short-term profitability in doing so. We often invest in young, immature businesses. And I mentioned the biotech company Moderna earlier on. And I think the value to them of having stable, long-term and supportive shareholders is not to be underestimated. So we don't have all the answers at Baby Gifford, but we are delighted that we've been able to deliver on our two objectives. We've delivered superior investment terms, uh, returns and we are helping our clients contribute to positive change to the companies in which they're investing in. We are in the early stages of our journey to deliver more than financial gains for our clients, but there is positive evidence building that we can do so, that the two objectives can be complementary, not contradictory, that purpose can complement profits, and that we can move to a more sustainable paradigm of capitalism that benefits more stakeholders than shareholders. So I think there is reason for optimism that we can power long-term positive change in listed equities.